Hey guys, welcome to the show. I'm really excited today. I have a whole new section that I actually want to introduce into my channel and it's called Q&A. So what it actually is, is that I'll be asking all these kind of YouTube questions to real YouTubers out there and they get to impart their knowledge on their journey in YouTube. So. Our first guest today is Mr. Brandon Washington, and here are some of the questions that I did ask him. So my interest in cinematography actually first started off right outside of high school. Uh, this is really when YouTube first kind of got started, and back then I really just wanted to capture videos of my friends who were like professional dancers at the time. And I was also a professional dancer at the time, but I really was going through this like creative metamorphosis where I was kind of transitioning out of dance and wanted to find a new creative outlet, which married perfectly to me picking up a camera and capturing content of me and my friends who were all dancers. And at first the purpose was really just to capture the content and just put it out there on YouTube, but what I quickly found was that I actually really, really enjoyed being behind the camera and it kind of led me down this long, never ending journey of trying to learn how to be a better shooter and ultimately what now we call a cinematographer. All right, so this question is probably the hardest and it's, you know, if I could only keep one camera and one lens, what would it be? I think for me personally today, in September of 2021, the one camera and lens combo I would have to go with would be the Sony FX3 and the Sony 24 to 70 lens. Personally, I think the FX3 is probably by far one of the best video shooting cameras. It is cinema, technically a part of Sony's cinema line, and with it having the 24 to 70 lens gives you pretty much as much versatility as you'd like. The main reason why I like this camera is because of its size. Sure, I could go with like an FX6 or a Red Komodo or you know something along those lines, but I find that if I were only gonna be limited to one camera to use for the rest of my life, a camera that gives me the most versatility would be the camera that I go with. Ironically, I actually don't own that camera and that is because I do own my Red Komodo and I own a couple Canon cameras and so right now I'm kind of locked into that Canon RF ecosystem but if I were starting all over from scratch today and you told me I could only have one camera lens, the FX3 and the Sony 24-70 would definitely be my go-to selection. You know, up until this point now, I would have to say that the shoot that I'm the most proud of is probably one of the shoots that I just kind of did for fun recently. Um, it technically was part of a YouTube campaign and it was called The Cyclist. Uh, it was a really, really fun shoot because I got a chance to kind of try something I had never done before, which is gimbal out of a car scenario. So we did this entire shoot following a cyclist and we did a lot of driving that day, shooting out of the back of a car using the Crane 2S following this cyclist. And during this shoot, I did a lot of different things. For one, I actually staged the exact time of day I wanted to film, which was early in the morning for sunrise. And then I knew that I wanted to get close-ups, medium shots, and then some really strong wide shots. And there were a couple shots in there that I had planned out in my head, drawn them out, knew exactly what I wanted them to look like. And that additional time in planning really made this one of the projects that I'm the most proud of because it wasn't just a matter of the shots being really good, but it was one of the first kind of projects that I did where I really mapped out exactly what I wanted. And then I was able to execute on that project that ultimately I wanted to capture. So when it comes to the next five years from now, honestly, my main plans are gonna be to really just continue to grow my team. In the last six months, I've added a full-time editor to my staff. I've added a part-time editor as well as a project manager. 
And honestly, I just see this team continuously growing. I know that for me, running a production company is exactly what I wanna do for the rest of my life. And it took me a while to kind of get on board with that. I did the freelance thing for a long time and I really enjoyed it and I really figured it out. But now this next journey of running a production company, to me is kind of the next gradual step. I wanna build something that's gonna outlive me and I wanna build something that's not only gonna give me the option to create for the rest of my life, but it's gonna give other creators that same opportunity. And so giving myself the ability to hire people by running a production company and not just some freelance thing really to me is going to be the legacy that I want to live behind. On top of that, building something that's bigger than me also gives me a little bit more flexibility in life. Whether I need to take a vacation or there's some health thing that comes up, regardless of the situation, by having something that's bigger than just me being an individual person, this means that my company can continue to run and thrive regardless if I'm a part of it or not. You know, when it comes to doing workshops, I have always wanted to put on in-person workshops. And pre-COVID times, this was something that I had actually been working on doing here in the Houston area where I am from and trying to build up a network to where I could do this and travel around the world to teach. I love teaching. It's the main reason why I dedicated my free time to creating my YouTube channel and also creating training courses because I love teaching. And personally, as much digital teaching as I do, and with all the benefits I think that come from digital teaching, I think there's an extra little bonus to being able to teach in person. And so ultimately the goal is to be able to travel around the world, teaching regardless to where those locations are, just to go around and not only just teach people, but also allow them to have experiences that maybe they wouldn't otherwise be able to have. I think my number one tip when it comes to shooting a great video is to really just have a strong plan. I always notice that the videos that I go into with a plan in mind, knowing exactly what type of shots I wanna get, knowing how long it's gonna take me to get those shots, and having all the gear and the resources needed in order to pull it off are the jobs that ultimately turn out the best. I mean, there is something to just running and gunning and trying to figure it out in the moment. However, whenever you plan out a video, it actually allows you to recreate your video a few times over. So what I mean by that is, the very first time you start thinking about what you want your video to be, that is the first time you start creating your video. Then when you start putting pen to paper and actually start writing out, whether that's drawing storyboards or creating a shot list or writing a script, that is the second time that you get a chance to create. And now you you get a chance to implement changes from your initial thought now to what you're writing down to actually take on set. Then when you get on set, you can look at what you have as a reference guide, but you can still get creative again and make additional adjustments in order to give yourself an even better element of creativity while you're out filming. So now you've actually adjusted your shots three times, but then you get a chance to do it one more time and that is in the edit. And what I find is that when I go through the process of creating my videos and planning them and knowing exactly what shots I'm getting and dialing in things the exact way that I want to and having these multiple opportunities to reassess what I'm creating, I personally find that my videos turn out to be far better than I ever expected them to be, but it's also because I know kind of what I'm getting before I get there, and it just allows me to be creative in the right moments instead of just trying to wing it and figure it out as I go. So if I had to boil all that down into one tip, it is just to make sure that you plan your shoots before you go out and start filming. You know, at this point in my career, I feel like from a production company standpoint, we get a chance to shoot quite a bit, but if there's something that I haven't gotten a chance to really sink my teeth into, that is narrative filmmaking. I've never really shot a short film of my own. I've assisted and DP'd and worked on other shorts. Um, I've also never shot a feature for that matter. And so I would really love to start to dive into the narrative world a lot more. I've kind of built up this plan for my business and my production company to get me to a point to where I could actually create 
productions the way I want to. I know that a lot of people say when you're first starting out, you don't have the gear, you don't have the knowledge, you don't have all these things you need in order to actually create your first narrative, short or feature for that matter. But what I've done is kind of systematically allowed the production jobs that I've been doing to learn the craft, to teach myself what I need, to be able to build up my arsenal of gear and to build up my arsenal of people around me in order to produce something that I'm proud of. I know that my first narrative is not gonna be my best work. I'm 100% aware of that. But personally, I think that if you were to ask me six years ago, was I ready? I would have said no. If you asked me today, am I ready? The answer is still no. However, I do still think that now, with having the more knowledge, having more resources, I am better suited to create something that ultimately I'll be proud of. Right, so that's it. Thanks so much, Brandon, for answering all those questions. I really, really do appreciate it. Anyway, thanks so much, guys, for tuning in. And till the next Q&A, see you guys again later. Peace.